All right, well, this morning we're going to be looking at uh, the Old Testament. We're going to be looking at the book of Numbers. And it's, uh, if you want to follow me in your Bible, if you have a Bible with you, it's Numbers chapter 11, and starting at verse 1. Numbers 11 and uh, verse 1. And when the people complained, it displeased the Lord, and the Lord heard it, and his anger was kindled, and the fire of the Lord burnt among them, and consumed them that were in the uttermost parts of the camp. And the people cried unto Moses. When Moses prayed unto the Lord, the fire was quenched. And he called the name of the place Tabera, because the fire of the Lord burnt among them. And the mixed multitude that was among them fell a lusting. And the children of Israel also wept again and said, Who shall give us flesh to eat? We remember the fish which we did eat in Egypt freely. The cucumbers and the melons and the leeks and the onions and the garlics. But now our soul is dried away. There is nothing at all beside this manna before our eyes. And so they're pleading before God, they want flesh to eat, there's nothing but this manna. Remember manna was a kind of bread that came down from heaven, something came down and it it lay on the ground and the name manna means what is it? God sent some miraculous food to feed the children of Israel in the wilderness. And they, it, that's what manna is. It's sort of like a bread and they gathered it together and they ate it. And now they're saying, we're, we're tired of this manna. It's so all we've got is this manna. What, remember the times in Egypt we had all that great food? Uh, cucumbers and onions? Great. So, so they're looking back and that, that's what they're saying. And God responds to this. If you go to verse 18 of the same chapter... Get the response of the Lord. He says, Say thou unto the people, Sanctify yourselves against tomorrow, and ye shall eat flesh. For you have wept in the ears of the Lord, saying, Who shall give us flesh to eat? For it was well with us in Egypt. Therefore the Lord will give you flesh, and ye shall eat. Ye shall not eat one day, nor two days, nor five days, neither ten days nor twenty days, but even a whole month, until it come out at your nostrils, and it be loathsome unto you, because that you have despised the Lord which is among you, and have wept before him, saying, Why came we forth out of Egypt? God sends this flesh. He sends quails, like birds, little kind of pigeony birds, uh, and he sends a lot of them. And the people start to eat. And if we turn to verse 33 now. I'm just going to finish with this verse now. Verse 33 of chapter 11. And while the flesh was yet between their teeth. Ere it was chewed. The wrath of the Lord was kindled against the people. And the Lord smote the people with a very great plague. What's interesting and I'm just going to come to the verses we looked at in a moment. What's interesting, when you start to witness to people about Jesus and you tell them about God, um, a lot of people will want to share with you their wisdom on this particular subject. And um, I'm not being frivolous when I say this, but this is really the reality of the situation. With some people, it's a bit like me trying to share with you uh, everything I, I know about mechanics, about the mechanics of a car, how it works, I know absolutely nothing about it. I know it moves, I know you get in it and drive about, I know there's an engine in there, but I don't know anything about mechanics. And you meet people who want to talk to you about God and give you their opinion, and when you question them, they've never read the Bible, they know absolutely nothing about it, they don't know the Lord Jesus himself, and yet many would still like to sort of pass themselves off as an expert on the subject and want to enter into a debate. And uh, I, I met a young man who was like this, and I was talking to him during the week, and uh, he said to me, well, 
God loves everybody the same. He said, God loves everybody the same and he doesn't care what they do and he doesn't care what they've done. He's just going to treat everybody the same. Well, as you can see from the passage that I read to you, that isn't what the Bible says. And so I said to the man, I said, really, is that what's going to happen? He said, yes. I said, and uh, where do you get that idea from? Oh, from the Bible. I said, right, and what particular verse in the Bible says that? Well, it might not surprise you to learn that he, he didn't know. See, people come to God with so many uh, uh, assumptions that are just simply not true. They come to God and uh, uh, they think about eternity and they think, well, I'll be all right because I'm a good person. You know, I, I think I'm a great person. I, I've tried, always tried to do the right thing in my life. But they don't know anything about God. They don't know anything about the conditions that God has laid down to be accepted by Him. God has laws. He has conditions. He has commandments. And if you've broken those commandments, those laws, those conditions, you're a sinner. That's what the Bible says. Sin is a transgression of the law of God. And so you have to come to God in faith. You have to leave your sin behind and believe in Jesus Christ. Be born again by the Spirit of God. You need forgiveness. And the children of Israel had come out of Egypt. They supposedly left behind all uh, uh, that, that terrible place as it was for them, a place of bondage and slavery. And come, they're heading towards the promised land. And this is what the verses here in Numbers are really, you know, talking about. The whole book of Numbers documents the children of Israel coming out of, uh, well, coming really from, from Mount Sinai and through the Sinai wilderness and through uh, to Kadesh Barnea, which is like the last sort of oasis in the Negev Desert. That's the last place just before you enter into the promised land. So the book of Numbers is dealing with that journey out of Egypt and into the promised land. And in that time, they'd seen many miracles of God. You know, they'd seen the Red Sea path and they'd gone through there. They'd had the presence of God with them. Do you remember there's the pillar of cloud and the pillar of fire? So they actually had God's presence with them and they'd seen amazing things but do you know what? They complained all the way from coming out of Egypt, all the way from the Red Sea. They complained right through, right to Kadesh Barnea itself. You come towards the end of Numbers, they're still murmuring and they're still complaining. And they complain, if you read Exodus, through, they complain through chapter 15, chapter 16, chapter 17. They're murmuring and complaining all the time. And so God now sends a warning. Says the, the the anger or the wrath of the Lord was kindled against them. Nothing to do with electronic books. Kindle. The word kindle is is in the old days. Like for example, in the time when uh, uh, the King James Bible was written, if you wanted to light a fire, you wouldn't have a match or, or a lighter. You had to uh, take a a flint, a piece of stone, and a piece of steel, and you strike the stone. Uh, with the steel and it produces a spark and what you would need to, to make the fire is kindling right kindling could be like uh, like dry grass or wood shavings or it could even be like um, sort of dry rag and that would be your kindling and the spark falls on that and it starts a fire and then you would take you actually pick that up in your hand whilst it's still smouldering and you put that into the twigs and then it would just start to blaze away and because of the complaining of the children of Israel, the anger of the Lord is kindled against them, like a fire starting. You know, people don't want to see this side of God. You know, people talk about God's forgiveness. Thanks be to God that he does forgive us, because where would we be if he didn't? But there is also an anger, a righteous anger with God, and it is kindled against the children of Israel. But even in this, you can see the grace and the mercy of God because it says that the fire went to the uttermost parts of the camp. In other words, it was just the, the perimeter of the camp that was burned up. And this is a warning.